Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Decore UU. My name is Sue Adi, and my pronouns are she, her. And I will be leading the service today, um, along with the good help of Karen Estrell and some singing from our own Ellen Rackney and um, some, a few other people who will be doing some readings. So I'm glad that you're all here. We are welcoming a led spiritual community, moving together in time in an open search for truth and meaning. We believe in people's inherent capacity to lead ethical lives of personal fulfillment, pursuing the good of humanity. We remind you this morning that this service is being both live streamed and recorded, meaning that anything you say will therefore be publicly available online. Good to bear that in mind as you make comments at various points in the service. We have been involved with our Zoom service for many months now, so I think most of you are familiar with how it works. We ask that you remain on mute uh, until those times when you might be taking part in the service. If you've printed out the bulletin, that Otter sent, you will see many of the announcements, but we will highlight a few of them for others here. And Karen, if you would like to read those, and I don't know if you also want to say anything more about some Zoom protocols, I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Thanks, Sue. Um, so I, before I proceed to the announcements regular, I guess I'll just note that if you're visiting us today, um, that you are welcome to complete the form at decorauuorg slash contact us to receive our weekly electronic newsletter or to learn more about our congregation. And you can also learn more about Unitarian Universalism at uua.org. So just a reminder, we're still on every other Sundays, so there will be no service next Sunday. The next service will be November 8th, Forgiveness and Race in America with Luther College Professor of Psychology, Lauren Toussaint. Lauren's talk will describe forgiveness of others and self-forgiveness in the context of current racial tensions and a history of racial prejudices and discrimination in the United States. Ironically, both kinds of forgiveness can be both good and bad if misunderstood or misapplied. His remarks will be focused on raising issues and questions for discussion. Carol Hagen will be the service leader with Carolyn Corbin providing service support. Uh, we will be doing the holiday gift program this year, but it will be COVID style. While we don't have details yet, we know it will be for one Decora area family with multiple children. When we get the family information, we will also be assigned a drop-off date. They are staggering the drop-off dates to reduce COVID risks for everyone involved. We will provide the list of requested gift items electronically and you will have options of indicating your choice of gift recipient items either electronically or by calling Ellen McDonald or Carl Peterson who are coordinating this venture. Both Carl and Ellen are on today's service. So I don't know if y'all need to say anything further about that. If you want to I'll open it up for a second. No, we're good. We have nothing new to report yet. So. <laughs> All right. So, okay, thanks. Save your treasures for the UU auction. Keep in mind that we are going to have our auction again this year. Um, it will be benefiting both the congregation and the Northeast Iowa Community Action Corporation's Low Income Heating Assistance Program. It will be online. If you have questions, you can contact Carolyn Corbin at carolyn at corbingroup.biz or Julie Odie at littleredkayak at gmail.com. Can I add something, Karen? Of course, Julie, go ahead. Yes, sorry, I don't have a, I can't raise my hand, right? Right, well, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can't, okay, you're a co-host. Um, <laughs> yes, so uh, there is a page on the um Decora UU website. Now you can link to it from the front page with information about how to fill out an electronic form to let us know about your treasures for the auction. 
And that's where we'll also put information about how to bid when we get to that point. So I will also be sending that information to Otter to send out to everyone. But um, thank you. Um, and uh, you can contact either me or Carolyn if you have any problems with the, you know, with the technology end of getting that information to us. So thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. So I hope everybody was able to see when I was on the home page over on the right, you'll see 2020 Decor UU Auction, and then you can click on the link to go to the auction page. And then they have lots of great instructions there as well as a link to the form where you can submit what your items will be. All right. So, Use your UU voice. If you're interested in recording something related to UU principles that we could use in this service, like a story, a poem, or a song, Carolyn Corbin would love to be in contact with you. She would like to video you, and then we could use that in the future. Uh, her contact information, again, is carolyn at corbingroup.biz. Carolyn, did you want to say anything further about that? I'm not sure she's on, actually. So. La, la, la. All right, I'm moving on, but I can always be interrupted. Um, want to note that on October 13th, our Board of Trustees voted to add Decora UU's name to an interfaith statement defending the democratic process, a faith community call to awareness and action. This called for a peaceful of transfer of power. The statement, originally from 13 Protestant, Catholic, and Jewish leaders, is also available for individuals to sign. The link is in the bulletin, which Otter emailed out, and uh, which, if it's not yet online, will be online soon, but it's probably already online. The next meeting of the Board of Trustees is Tuesday, November 13th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Otherwise, we have some Announcements that we've seen repeatedly, just keep in mind if you need support, you can contact our fellowship coordinator on our dreaming. UU Circles are continuing and Sue Audi is your primary contact for that. You can continue to be able to access our previous services through our website, decorauu.org. Decora Community Food Pantry continues to need volunteers as well as financial assistance. And the mail chair program is still going on if you're interested in either writing letters or receiving letters. Mail chair is something that you might want to look into. Again, details are in the bulletin and online. Sue, I'll turn it back over to you. Oh, I guess I should ask, are there any uh, announcements that need to be lifted up that were not just lifted up? If so, please raise your hand and participants or star six if you're on the phone. You seem to be good, all right. Right. Thank you, Karen, for those announcements. Today, this Ancestor Remembrance Celebration comes at the time when we are at the last of October. Our fit, how fitting that our theme for the month is transformation. Its Latin roots define it as crossing over to another form. Metamorphosis is the Greek word for a similar idea, changing shape. When I looked these words up in my Random House Dictionary, I was surprised to see how many meanings both of these prefixes have. The words across, beyond, through, along with, and among are all possible ways of trying to figure out just how this shape changing happens. Science gives us the physical story of death, but the mystery of it all has fascinated humans forever. Going into the great beyond, crossing over to the other side, passing through this world into the next, I don't imagine that we will ever tire of the magic and poetry that is also a part of death. As we contemplate the loss of those we have loved and lost, both science and mystery play a part. 
Our chalice lighting will be found on the uh, screen as Karen posts it. And I'm very happy that Steve Grove will be reading it for us today. If you would like to read along at home, please um, remain on mute and read with Steve as he reads. We light this chalice in honor of all who no longer walk this earth with us. Teachers, mentors, partners, parents, loved ones, and friends who have loved and nurtured us, making it possible for us to become who we are. Blessed be their memory. Thank you, Steve. Um, our opening song for this morning comes from Maggie Wheeler. It's one that I I learned last year just after our Day of the Dead service, and I knew that I would want to teach it to you this year. But because of our different circumstances, we'll let Maggie Wheeler sing it, and you can sing along at home. I think you'll catch on pretty quickly. It's a fairly simple song with some nice drumming rhythm at the beginning, and it helps us get into this beautiful spirit of walking with our ancestors. I walk in the spirit, I walk in the light I walk through the darkest hours of night And I call on my ancestors to my left and my right To walk with me, to walk with me I walk in the spirit, I walk in the light I walk in the service of doing what's right And I call on my ancestors to my left and my right To walk with me, to walk with me I walk in the spirit, I walk in the light I walk with the knowledge that we'll be alright And I call on my ancestors to my left and my right To walk with me to walk with me I walk in the spirit I walk in the light I walk with my neighbors to fight the good fight and I call on my ancestors to my left and my right to walk with me to walk with me I walk in the spirit I walk in the light I walk for the water the water is life and I call on my ancestors to my left and my right to walk with me to walk with me I walk in the spirit I walk in the light I walk with the promise of healing in sight and I call on my ancestors to my left and my right to walk with me to walk with I walk in the spirit, I walk in the light I walk for the children and their right to survive And I call on my ancestors to my left and my right To walk with me, to walk with me I walk in the spirit, I walk in the light I walk through the darkest hours of night and I call on my ancestors to my left and my right to walk with me, to walk with me and I call on my ancestors to my left and my right to walk with me, to walk with me and I call on my ancestors to my left and my right to walk with me, to walk with me Thank you. 
maybe you can see why I got into that song. It's just got quite a beautiful rhythm and that repetition is a part of all, all good, good poetry, good reading, good music that just pulls you in as you say those words over and over again. We call on our ancestors to our left and our right to walk with us today. At this time, I will read a short land acknowledgement. With this land acknowledgement, our congregation is engaging in a practice of truth-telling and reconciliation. As part of this practice, we acknowledge that Northeast, Northeast Iowa was home to the Bakotsi, the Sac and Fox or Meskwaki, the Dakota and the Ho-Chunk, peoples whose relationship to this land continues to this day. Please pause with me for a moment as we commit our hearts to uplifting, standing with, listening to and following the lead of our indigenous brothers, sisters and friends as they continue to seek justice. As we honor and remember indigenous peoples today, I invite you to take a look behind me at our altar, which of course comes from many indigenous traditions um, of Mexico. Many of the indigenous traditions from all over our country are deeply embedded into our culture. And we often don't realize it, but when we do, we find great beauty in them. At this time, we will have a reading that Nancy Berry will read. It is from a woman who I met in Minneapolis when she was pastor of uh, a Unitarian society there. Uh, she is now in Kansas and uh, continues her, her good work, I'm sure. So Nancy, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Sue. Lest we forget by the Reverend Dr. Kendall Gibbons. What do the living owe to the dead? Every tribute that we offer to those who have been our teachers and guides, those who have loved us and made it possible to become who we are, falls short of paying the debt that we owe them. I am inclined to believe that what we owe them is this, that we live fully and do not forget. What the dead deserve from us is that we should create lives of courage and character, lives profound and resonant and abundant. For the awareness that life is short gives our lives a poignant urgency and bids us fill our days with the work and love, with the beauty and memory that matter most. Lest we forget how much we owe, lest we forget how brief we are, lest we forget. Thank you, Nancy. This is now the time in our service when we think of joys and sorrows that have come into our lives. Um, you are invited to share um, the names of our departed loved ones later in the service. But at this time, if you wish to raise your Zoom hand in order to share any other personal joys or sorrows, we are welcome to do that. We will also offer a time, we'll maybe begin with some of the online folks and then we'll offer a time for those of you who are with audio only to um, also take part in this part of our service. Carrie? Um, I wanted to, uh, well, I would light a candle if I could, out of concern. This morning, Mark Meadows, who is, I believe, the chief of staff for Trump, said that they aren't going to do anything to prove to control the pandemic. Um, they basically came out and said those words, which is what they've been doing since the beginning, basically, but to actually say it 
Um, it, it's worrisome. And I just, I don't see how we can hope that Joe is going to win and then wait until January. If there was ever a moment for the 25th Amendment, I think this would be it. I'm just so concerned about where we are and the, the potential loss of life. Uh, I'm just beside myself. But I guess I'm not trying to get political, but it's not political. It's about human life. Ellen McDonald. Thank you. I want to light a candle. I would light two, actually. Um, the first is for someone I love very much, um, my cousin who's in the hospital in Detroit um, on a ventilator because of COVID and he and his family have no idea where he got it. Um, but he's been in the hospital now for about 12 days and on the ventilator for eight and his things get a little bit hopeful and then not and back and forth and I'm quite terrified for him and so sad that he's in the hospital by himself uh, with family that are standing by, nearby, but can't see him. Um, the other is a candle from my sister-in-law, Ani, Annalise, um, who I just learned last night, her sister died about three days ago. And these two are children of, they're refugees, they were refugees, and 75 years later, the the trauma has lived on through their lives in mental health and physical health. And um, that's a candle for Ani. Carl? I wanted to bring greetings from Mona. I talked with her yesterday. She's in Green Bay. Very happy to be in Green Bay and so close to her family. All of her children are within an hour or so. <clears throat> but she misses us at the Cora UU, and so she gives our greetings. Thank you. Steve? Hi, I am very saddened uh, about the fact that I have not heard from my college roommate, Doug uh, Howard, who lives in La Crosse, and he, um, he has not answered any of my comments or any any kind of letter, uh, email. He um, is a very dear friend of mine as well. And I just hold up uh, him in uh, my hope that he is uh, doing well. Thank you, Steve. Um, I have a joy to share. Um, I had my first surgery this past month. I um, we discovered that I had uterine fibroids, and uh, and I went to Mayo, and they were able to get rid of them successfully. Um, and I feel like it's important that I talk about this because the more that I've talked to other women who especially are above the age of 40, it seems like many of us have encountered this issue. Um, and I had no idea before. So I feel like it's important that we are transparent about the things that we go through together. Um, and I'm grateful that it was a very easy surgery with a very easy recovery. And I hope I don't have to have another surgery for the rest of my life, because that would be cool. Thanks, everybody. Uh, any of our audio only participants, if you hit star six, that will unmute you. Sue, I'm not seeing anybody else with a hand raised or... Unmute. All right. I will um, mention I had a, um, a message from Paige Murphy um, asking that we keep her in our prayers. Um, I'm not sure what in exactly is her concern at this time, but I know that there have been many with her physical conditions. So I will 
just raise Paige up in our hearts this morning. And then I light a virtual candle for joys or concerns that are unspoken, but remain in our hearts and minds. Please join me for a few moments of silence. And now in response to our joys and sorrows, instead of singing together our song, we are fortunate today to have its author, Ellen Rockney, sing it for us. So thank you, Ellen. We look yeah. forward to it. You're welcome. And of course, feel free to join me where you are. <clears throat> I thought we might sing it twice through. Um, the first for each other and the second time, for those people that we can't be with this morning, but that we hold in our hearts. So, your joy is my joy, your sorrow, my sorrow. Together we live our days, together we love this place. In beloved community, we are not alone. Your joy is my joy, your sorrow, my sorrow. Together we live our days, together we love this place in beloved community we are not alone we are not alone in our beloved community thank you ellen now is the time in our service for the offering. Even though we are meeting via Zoom, we continue to require the gracious gifts of our members and friends to support our congregation and its work in the community and world. We understand that present circumstances may make it difficult for some folks at this time. But if you can and would like to give and you are online, please visit decorauu.org and click on the Give Online button in the middle of the page to learn of the numerous ways that you can give. If you're participating by phone, but do not have internet and do not have internet access, you may mail your check to Decorah UU, Post Office Box 382, Decorah, Iowa, 52101. That's PO Box 382. Part of our fellowship's commitment and outreach to our community is to support worthy organizations. This month's recipient is Northeast Iowa Community Action Corporation and all the good work they do with heating assistance among other things. If you would like to donate to NICAC, please designate so on your check if you're mailing one. And if you wish to use PayPal on our website, you can select share the plate from the drop down menu. In honor of the ways we support our community and congregation, we'll now sing together muted at home. I must say, I do look forward to the day when I can say we will all stand and sing together next to each other. But today we will sing at home, muted, our beautiful, for all that is our life.
thank you to Otter Dreaming for the beautiful music recorded by him. And on my front door, I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, you go right ahead, Karen. Well, I was just going to introduce you, although of course we've been with you for a while, but I thought <laughs> you read your bio if that's okay. Yeah, please. <laughs> a founding member of Decora UU, Suadi loves to create rituals which respect our heritage while remaining relevant to our present. Reimagining new ways of being in the world allows us to honor all that we still love about our past while acknowledging our mistakes and drawing more people into our wider circle. I'm grateful for Sue for leading our service, welcoming our ghosts, a service of remembrance. Thank you, Karen. On my front door is a sign. It reads, kiss the season and shun regrets. The words serve as a constant reminder for me to live up to this idea, to be present in each day and ready to embrace the next. The transition from one season to another is often stressful living in a place where so much weather variation is not only possible, but probable. There is always much to, to, to do to prepare for these turning times, opening up outdoor spaces as spring turns to summer, and now securing all of them as the cooler fall days mourn of winter. Now with summer slipping away, the red and gold leaves drifting by our windows, we are conscious of the passing of time. We also draw closer to the time of year when we remember the people who have passed from our lives. This year we have felt a communal cry of loss as we mourn the many who have died from the coronavirus. The beautiful display in front of the UCC church near the courthouse in Decorah reminds us of each life lost in Iowa with a light shining for each of them. If you haven't had a chance to drive by the Decora UU or the um, UCC church, I hope you will and notice the, the beautiful sign that is there. But in the midst of our sadness and the somber feel to this time of year, of the deaths we did not expect, there is more. Love lingers with us as we remember and keep alive the stories of our dear ones. It brings us joy and laughter to realize how our lives can be rekindled by the light their memories spark in us. Such is the beauty, color, and mystery that the Day of the Dead traditions offer us. No wonder this holiday has become so popular even beyond our Mexican-American friends. The wonderful family movie Coco has given us a glimpse of it. Every summer when I plant marigolds, I imagine them sprinkled over the sidewalk to our home and leading to my altar for Day of the Dead. I have done this during our services for many years and there are some on the altar today. In the movie Coco, it is the marigold bridge that connects this world and the world of the dead. The marigold bridge represents the strange, mysterious space and time between life and death. I've always been fascinated with these liminal times, those times when we are in a between place. The word liminal comes from the Latin meaning threshold, and it suggests a crossing over space, a space where you have left something behind, yet are not fully settled in something else. It's a transition time. You may remember your adolescence when you were aching to get through that place between childhood and adulthood, feeling the awkwardness of both. Or do you recall those fascinating stories that people have told of near death experiences, a feeling as if floating between life and death? Similarly, the Celtic festival Samhain, from which we inherit Halloween, speaks of a time when the veil is thin between the worlds, enabling people and spirits to pass back and forth between them both. 
If you wish to keep away from spirits with evil intentions, you'd better wear a costume. And the custom continues to this day. Although you may not feel the need to wear a costume, how do you feel about death? Have your thoughts changed over the years? The Day of the Dead traditions, which we honor today, offer us a chance to take off our Northern European blinders just a bit, to see death from another perspective. Nobel Prize winning author um, from Mexico, Octavio Paz, understood the difference. The word death, he said, is not pronounced in New York, in Paris, in London, because it burns the lips. The Mexican, in contrast, is familiar with death, jokes about it, caresses it. It is one of his favorite toys and most steadfast love. We are getting better with talking about death, says Lori Erickson, who spoke to our fellowship, you may remember, last February. In her book, Near the Exit, Travels with the Not-So-Grim Reaper, Lori suggests that one of the most life-affirming things we can do is to invite death along for the ride. These ancient Day of the Dead traditions are all about inviting death along with us as we travel our mortal road. As we watch this short clip from the movie Coco, where the young Miguel discovers that the Marigold Bridge really does exist, imagine what it might be like to visit someone from the other side, to share a song, a beloved memory, or an embrace just for one special day. Karen will now play a little bit of that um, that movie Coco that I hope many of you might uh, get a chance to see if you haven't already enjoyed it. Dante? Dante? Dante, wait up! You gotta stay with me, boy. We don't know... We weren't. Well, I don't know. I thought it might have been one of those made up things that adults tell kids, like vitamins. Miguel, vitamins are a real thing. Well, now I'm thinking maybe they could be. Ah, uh, uh, yes. I don't know how many of you have have had a chance to see the movie, but it is really delightful. And there are beautiful themes to this movie, um, also about about how we need to follow our dreams, about the power and beauty of music, um, and many more. So give it a shot sometime, even if you're not a kid, just a kid at heart. You'll still enjoy it, I'm sure. Many of our Mexican-American friends have commented that this movie has made it um, more possible for people to understand some of their traditions in a very loving way. And so we're grateful for that too. In Mexico, they say there are three deaths. When you first become aware of your mortality, and then when you actually physically die, and the last one is when no one says your name again. And that's what we're here to do today, to say the names, to speak the names of those whom we have loved or known who have now passed into another way of being. And so we will speak their names now, remembering first those from our own congregation who have already journeyed over the Marigold Bridge. I will read them in the order of their passing. Daryl Hoff. Al Bergen. 
Laura Beard. Janet Lambert. Sue Peterson. Sarah Corbin. And now I would invite those of you who would like to share names um, of folks who are important to you to speak those names. And as we do this, I'm going to invite you all to unmute and forget all the Zoom protocol that we usually do. And we will allow the names to be spoken. Let them go out into the universe and speak them whenever you wish, as many as you want to say. And they can all come together or whenever they come. But let us just speak these names. Yes. I'd like to say Michael Duncan. That's my Shirley. father. Shirley K. Spear. Carol Rockney. Glenn nice. Hagen. Susan Cole Allman. Leo Clark. Stella Mary Clark, Price. Emma Rockney, Tony Don and Rita Daywitt, Donald Case Spear, Ruth Wilcox, Louise Hagen, at Moss, Ellen Addy, Leo, Corrine, Madeline, Gerald Gross, Louise Earhart, Michelle Clark, Raymond Earhart. Deanne Sverdston. Tim Gilmore. John Lewis. Oh, wow. Bernadette Walsh. Karen Jed Godzinski. Richard Rockney. Lauren Hawkinson. Anthony Bourdain. Bill Kidd. David Beck. Emma Hawkinson. Alda Grove. John Langley. Hagen. Gina Hagen. Benny and Louise Grove. Gerald Addy. John and Margaret Mokelbest. Jeeva singing on. <laughs> Leah, Sarah, Gertrude, Elizabeth, Ines, Connie. We have with us a few photos that have been submitted today. Um, I, if any of you have a photo that you wish to show on your screen, you're welcome to do that too, to add a more physical um, a face presence, but we will share a few of them. Ellen, do you wanna say something about this picture? Yeah, this, uh, this woman is named Bridget Curran Stover and she was my freshman roommate. We were put together by a computer and it couldn't have been better. She, we stayed really close friends. She was my witness in my wedding and she died in 2009. I try to stay in touch with her daughters. This little girl on her lap is in high school now. Thank you. And I don't know if Shirley or Ruth are with us today to say something about this couple. Perhaps not, um, but I will mention that these are the Jenkins. 
um, Ruth Jenkins' parents and Shirley Vermes's parents. This is on their wedding day, I believe. <laughs> He looks like Charlie. <laughs> mm -hmm, he does. <laughs> Christina, Adi, would you like to say something about these folks? These are my wonderful grandparents, Shirley and Milton K. Spear, mom's parents, who I made a an altar to in my house this, this Day of the Dead hmm. because we're... Beautiful, beautiful humans. This is my maternal grandmother, Susan, um, after whom I'm named. Um, as you can see, she loved to dress up. And <laughs> she was quite the elegant woman. So I've learned a few tricks from her over the years. Blessed Susan. <laughs> That's the end of the photos that we had shared with us ahead of time. But if folks have other mementos they wish to share, this is the time. I'd like to have a show, a share a photo, but I wonder how I do that. Could you, is there a way to explain that real quickly? Yeah. So do you have it up on your computer, Carrie? Um, I'll, I'll get it up. I'll, I'll okay. do that real quickly. If, yeah, I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen and then I'll allow you to share your screen and then okay. and share it with everybody. <clears throat> this is a picture of my mom and dad on their 25th anniversary. Still full of piss and vinegar in this picture. I love it. <laughs> you can see Dad's leering grin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I have one of my dear, dearly departed uh, Karen Jogodinsky. Uh, she uh, was a colleague at uh, Hazelton, and she died September 20th. She was a dear lady, and I would like to just share uh, something. Maybe I can read it for you all, folks. This is an Apache blessing that came with her obituary. May the sun bring you new energy by day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow new strength into your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. Apache blessing. Thanks. Now, well, anyone else have a photo that they want to put on the screen or just hold up in front of the computer? If not, I'm I'm imagining that many of us have our, have our own altars at home. They're just called displays of photos on the walls, and of those people who have been important and meaningful in in our own lives. So now I ring the bell once again for all of those people that we have seen, whose photos we've seen, or whose names we have mentioned, out into the universe. Their spirits come and go, and may the ancestors be with us. I think we have enough time to sing our closing song, um, but first let's extinguish the chalice together. The words are printed on um, the screen so you can see them and I will read them. And if you would like to remain muted and read them together. For those who walked with us, this is a prayer. For those who touched and tended us, who lingered with us while they lived. This is the thanksgiving for those who journey with us in the shadows of awareness, in the crevices of memory, in the landscape of our dreams. This is the benediction. Let us depart in peace, remembering that there is no end 
to the circle of life. Our closing song today is no end to the circle. There is no end. There is no end as life circles round, as life and death move around in this great circle that we know. So join us as we sing this song, which is by Starhawk and her friends from the group called Reclaiming. For you can see me in your eyes When they are mirrored by a friend There is no end to the circle to the circle, no end. I thank everyone for being here today as we celebrate this very special, poignant time of the year. A special thanks, of course, to, to Karen and to Otter and to all those who have participated in the service, Steve and Nancy, and who am I forgetting? <laughs> to Ellen, of course, for singing for us. So thank you all. And is that the picture there, Carrie, that we're seeing? Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, that's thank me you. and my dad. He was uh, a delightful 
hippie. <laughs> oh, he looks wonderful. So much love. <laughs> so so much love in that photo. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, I remind you that next week there will be no service. Um, but if you do wish to take part in a service, you can always go to the Church of the Larger Fellowship, which is the online UU congregation that began years ago as a church by mail. They live stream a service every Sunday at 7 p.m. <laughs> Central Time. You can visit questformeaning.org and click on worship to learn more about how to do that. Are there any other closing announcements, Karen, that you would like to make? No, I think, you know, I've been monitoring the chat, just telling you that um, that Christina says tears here in my living room. Thank you for sharing this meaningful view of death. And there's a lot of thank you so much. Um, and I don't know if everybody noticed when we were speaking the words aloud, Jean noted that it was eerily beautiful and was making her leak. <laughs> And she concludes by saying, so nice to see your smiles, my allergies, and I say thank you. <laughs> I uh, leak well, a lot lately with all of my anxiety out of control right now. So <laughs> thank you all. Yes. Thank you. Wonderful to be with you all. And the ancestors are here. And of course, the actual Day of the Dead doesn't come until November 2nd. And so we have this whole week and leading into the to the next to, to carry these things with us as we prepare for a very momentous time in our country. Blessings to you uh, all. I have a question for you. What is that movie? Is it Coco, like the gorilla? Just Coco, C-O-C-O, -C -O, Coco. Okay, thank you. I believe it's available on YouTube for free. Well, goodbye, everyone, and thank you. Bye-bye.